Okay, so it looks like we're live. Um, thanks very much for joining me for our, our prayer and um, communion time this evening. So we're going to have uh, communion. So if you've not got that ready, if you'd like to get some bread and uh, drink, just so when we're ready for that, that would be brilliant. Um, I'm Mike. Thanks for joining me. Um, yes, my hair is getting uh, more and more uh, full. Um, <laughs> I was thinking as I looked in the mirror, um, you know, maybe maybe it's like, uh, you know, the parable of the mustard seed. And, uh, you know, maybe it's like a sort of prophetic thing of the kingdom of God just keeps growing till it's the biggest bush in town. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not really being serious. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. I just wanted to say at the beginning, actually, that uh, I've been looking forward to this prayer time for some while. But today I've just been not on good form. Uh, I've been been tired <laughs> and, and, and stressed and get stressed about you know, silly little things and being grumpy and irritable uh, and uh, not not on good form. Um, uh, but anyway, here we are. Uh, but I just wanted to say that just because I don't want to lead a prayer time and particularly lead communion where I'm sort of pretending at all in any way. So I don't know how, what sort of day you've had, but why don't we just bring this time before God now? Because I believe he wants to meet with us. He is here with us. Uh, we're gathered together. There's more than two or three of us. Uh, and uh, he's here with us. So hallelujah. Let's let's uh, let's just welcome the Holy Spirit. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time. We thank you that we are joined, Lord God, even though we're not together physically. And you are here, Jesus, in the midst of us. Lord God, we welcome you. We give this time to you. We say, Holy Spirit, breathe upon this time now. Lord God, in Jesus' name, may your kingdom come. Even through this time, we pray. Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some uh, thoughts and um, then we're going to go into communion and we're going to pray sort of uh, following on from that. Or well, yeah, something like that anyway. <laughs> See how it goes. Um, anyway, uh, let me start off um, by saying that um, I was listening to the devotion time uh, yesterday morning um, and um uh, just listening to, by the way, you can put comments on. I may not read them, but you can put comments. <laughs> um, listening to yesterday morning's devotion time, OK, on Moravian reading from Acts. And I was struck by what uh, John Harding said about Paul uh, and about how he's taken. Uh, basically, he is taken before the Roman uh, commander in Jerusalem and then he's taken higher up. He's taken off to Caesarea to the governor, uh, Governor Felix, and then Governor Festus takes over. He's like taken from one higher authority to another, uh, then King Agrippa. You know, all these all these authorities over Judea, he has these personal audiences with. And then finally, uh, God takes him, of course, to Rome, to Caesar. And it just struck me. Uh, how just, you know, God, what God was doing here, you know, God was bringing the gospel to the nations, but he was also bringing the gospel to the nation's rulers. And he, he was not just, he wasn't just working, therefore, sort of bottom up, you know, we're very used to working in terms of spreading the gospel sort of bottom up. So, you know, our, our neighbours and our people in our local community and, uh, and, and the gospel grows kind of like that. Um, but also God, I believe, works from the top sometimes. He sometimes works top down. He wants to reach the people at the top as well as the people on the ground. OK, and we see this pattern here. Um, and, uh, G you know, Jesus went before the Roman governor. Paul is taken to the emperor, you know, and um, I think about in our modern day. We can, we can even see that having happened in the last 50 years. I mean, Billy Graham, you know, the world's most famous evangelist of the last 100 years, um, you know, he, he's preached to millions, you know, across the world. But he also spoke to national leaders, to world leaders, you know, all the American presidents. He had a private audience with the Queen in this country. I mean, that was unprecedented what he did, you know, in that very private audience, which wouldn't normally happen. And, you know, who knows what the fruit of that private audience, you know, the Queen asked for that private audience. Who knows what the fruit of that private audience that the Queen had with Billy Graham has had? on her life who knows how the 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 messages that she brings each christmas don't you know aren't influenced by what 
you know, she received during that time. I don't know. But uh, but God, the point is, God brought Billy Graham not just to, to, to the masses, but also to world leaders. OK, we see the gospel doing that on the ground and and hitting the top level as well. Um, and it's really been on my heart um, during for, for the last couple of years or so, really, to see God raise up voices in our nation, in the public arena who would point to Jesus. You know, we hear so much in the media about all sorts, you know, whether it's the environment or whether it's COVID or race. But where are the voices that in the context of those topics point to Jesus? OK, that's what I want to see over our nation. And that's what I want to, to bring us to today. I mean, obviously, there are Christians that work in the media, but God can suddenly raise up people from nowhere. I mean, we, we see it happening in uh, in the secular context. We see like, a, you know, a 15 year old girl, whatever age she was when she first came to the fore. Uh, Greta Thunberg from Scandinavia. Suddenly, everybody in the world knows who she is. Everybody in the world knows what she stands for. She's a world spokesperson on the environment. You know, it comes from nowhere. God can just do that with people. He can pluck people out. And how much more we want to see God do that with his people. Now, it reminds me of uh, about 14 years ago, I was in a prayer meeting in the frontline building, just a few of us there. Dave Sharples was there and he was sharing about uh, stuff. It was all because of his experience with Kids Club and um, uh, and the kids and the families there and the, and the issues that he saw. And I, and I just really felt I wanted to pray that God would give him um, influence with people in authority, like like local government, central government. Within a year, I mean, extraordinary series of events, but within a year, he'd been invited onto the main stage of the Conservative Party conference and given a complete carte blanche, a complete open hand to say exactly what he wanted. I mean, who could believe it? He wasn't even a Conservative Party member. That was the favour that he was given that came just through an extraordinary series of circumstances. Right out of God, nowhere, God just plucked him up and set him in that place. And that just excites me. God can, can raise up anybody from anywhere to be his spokesperson. Um, and, and that's really on my heart to pray in this nation that God raises up people in our day who will point once again to Jesus. Uh, we had the Archbishop of Canterbury just a few weeks ago. Uh, he was on BBC Breakfast News and he had a, a long interview, about 10 minutes or so, where um, uh, Dan, Dan Walker was asking him questions, you know, about what's it mean, you know, to pray in the pandemic? What's it mean to turn to God? You know, so very open uh, uh, context like that. But something that really sparked my um, really sparked my imagination and, uh, and excited me this week. Was, um, Mary's given me this. It was an article that was uh, she saw on Facebook in The Guardian. It's about a new film that's coming out. Uh, they're, they're hoping for it to be released this year. It's made by Norman Stone, who won a BAFTA 35 years ago for the film Shadowlands about, uh, about uh, C.S. Lewis. Uh, and um, it's basically a new film about C.S. Lewis. But what was particularly interesting was the, the the, the Guardian headline said, quiet, C.S. Lewis is on, why subject a new film could be right for now? And this is the, the Guardian quotes the, the director Norman Stone. It says, Stone believes that people can particularly relate to Lewis in the bleak times of COVID-19, just as they did during the Blitz, listening to his famous BBC radio talks. Those broadcasts were so successful, pub owners were saying, quiet everybody. Mr. Lewis is on. They'd all tune in. He talked in a way that they all understood, explaining his faith in the context of hardship and the war. And I thought, wow, why can't God do that again? He can do it again in our day, have people in the media explaining the relevance of our faith to people across this nation. Let's have it, God. So, this is what I want to pray for in a minute, but we're going into communion and you might think, what's the relevance with communion? Well, in, uh, in one of the famous verses about communion is in uh, Corinthians, uh, where it says, uh, here we are, um, the, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, um, the Lord's Supper. Um, it says, uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26, 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I was thinking about that uh, phrase, uh, proclaiming the Lord's death. What does that mean? I mean, when we take communion, we, we, you know, obviously we're coming in a very personal, intimate way before God and before the cross. But there's also an element in which when we take communion, we're, in, we're taking part in a prophetic act, which is proclaiming the death of Jesus until he comes. In other words, we're kind of proclaiming to the principalities and powers the gospel. Because the death of Jesus, his crucifixion, is what the gospel is all about. It's the pivotal thing, isn't it? Paul writes in the beginning of that letter, he says, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 22 to 24. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To Jews a stumbling block and to Gentiles foolishness, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so when we take this bread in a moment and, and drink the cup, we're, we're declaring Christ crucified. We're declaring his death until he comes. We're declaring it, that this is the pivotal moment of history that changes everything. It doesn't just change everything in our lives. We're not just receiving something for ourselves, but we're declaring it Christ crucified. This is the pivotal transformational moment of history and it affects history now. Now, thinking again about the cross, here is a verse from uh, Isaiah, the end of Isaiah 52. And this is describing the cross prophetically, of course, it says, Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted. Just as many were astounded at you, my people, so his appearance was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. You know, Jesus was so beaten and everything else that his body his, just didn't look like a human being. And his form more than the sons of men. Thus he will sprinkle many nations with his blood. Listen to this. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him. For what had not been told them, they will see. And what they had not heard, they will understand. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him when they see the cross. And so uh, if you have your bread and your drink ready, I'd like to go into communion now as a personal act of receiving Jesus, you know, into our lives afresh, of connecting with him, but also as a declaration into the heavenlies that the cross changes everything, not just in our lives, but in our world, in our nation. You know, that kings will shut their mouths on account of him. So let's, uh, let's take our bread. And if I just read, if I go back to this passage uh, again in 1 Corinthians 11. <clears throat> For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we thank you, Jesus, for your body and we receive from you this grace through your broken body for us. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
So Jesus, we receive the <clears throat> Lord Jesus, your death for us personally. We thank you that you have hung on the cross and that you have set, said, it is finished. It is accomplished. We thank you that the t temple of the curtain has been torn in two. That separation <clears throat> between us and God has been removed. We thank you, Jesus, that all, uh, that, that everything for our salvation, our sanctification, everything, Lord God, is accomplished on the cross. And we receive that. We receive the clothing of your righteousness, Lord God, that you have clothed us with garments of, of salvation, wrapped us with that robe of righteousness. But also, we declare your death, Jesus, until you come. Lord, there's all sorts of things going on in, the, in our world. Um, you know, that there's troubles in nations, there's COVID, there's, there's whatever. But over all these things, we declare your death until you come. We declare that your crucifixion and your resurrection from the dead is the pivotal transformational moment in history. And we just pray over our nation, Father God. I bring our nation to you now, that you would raise up um, men, women, young people, old people, Lord God, even children, if, if you want to do that. You would raise up voices who speak over our nation, who point once again to you, Jesus, in our nation. Lord God, raise up, you know, the, the Dave Sharples, raise up the C.S. Lewis's, Lord God, raise up those people in the marketplace, in the public domain, in the media, who will speak to kings, Lord, who will speak to those who, who carry authority in our society, in our nation, and their mouths will shut uh, because of what they hear of you and what they see of you, Jesus, and of the cross. We say, may your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. We just declare, may your kingdom come. And I've got a verse uh, from Isaiah 52. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, that's the wrong one. Um, just a minute. Uh, it's Isaiah 57. <laughs> and it says, verse 14, and it will be said, Build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstacle out of the way of my people. For thus says the high and exalted one who lives forever, whose name is holy. I dwell on a high and holy place and also with the contrite and lowly of spirit in order to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. And we thank you, Lord, that you that you are with us, Lord God, when in our loneliness. But we thank you also for these words where it says, and it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstacle out of the way of my people. And in the name of Jesus, Father God, I take those words from your word and I just declare them over our nation. And I say, build up, build up. Prepare the way, remove every obstacle out of the way of my people. Every obstacle that would gag people from naming the name of Jesus. Every obstacle that would hold people back uh, from standing for you, Jesus, and declaring your name in the public domain, in the in the marketplace, in the in the media, Lord God, before kings and those in authorities. Uh, everything that would that would hold them back. Every obstacle that would stand in their way. I say, be removed in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Be removed. Remove every obstacle out of the way of my people. Thank you, Father. Build up, build up, prepare the way. Father, may you go before your people in this hour in which we live now. Will you prepare the way for your people? Will you give them positions? Will you give them platforms to speak your word, to raise the name of Jesus over our nation like never before? That your kingdom may come, that your will will be done in our land, in our day, on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your victory, Jesus, on the cross. We thank you that you made a public spectacle of the principalities and powers 
triumphing over them through the cross. We thank you that you've done that for us individually, but you've also done it over every principality and power that would stand over this nation, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for the victory of the cross, that it outshines every other event, your cross and your resurrection, outshines every other event that we would hear about in the news or in human history. And we say, Lord Jesus, may your kingdom come. We proclaim your death until you return. Thanks for joining me. God bless. Have a good evening.